I uh, wanted to talk today. I was doing a series of talks on Monday, and I they are kind of moving them. So I'm actually going to do today what I was going to do tomorrow, and uh, um, then I'll continue tomorrow with a second case. And this is about a book, thank you, called The Blue Cliff Record. And, but really, uh, you know, when we do talks on these things, uh, we, uh, we do them often enough that it's kind of like, um, these are koans, a collection of koans, which for those of you who don't know are questions that can only be answered experientially that we use in our training. And some of the ones that people know outside the Zen community are things like, what is the sound of one hand clapping, or things like that. And we actually do hundreds of them, and that's part of the training. Uh, this collection, called the Blue Cliff Record, would be something that is done after you've been studying for quite a while, uh, maybe as long as 10 years. Or so, but I'm going to use it, see, the, uh, because I talk on it often, I'm going to use them like you would use a piano to make music. So it's not about anything. See, and I, I, when I talk up here, I say this often enough, I'm not talking about anything, which you'll sh shortly see. <laughs> uh, I'm just singing a song. Uh, and this is a, a song uh, about the, the way, the, the Dharma. And uh, when you go back enough, far enough in the history, and you go to the early people like Milarepa talking, they're called songs. They're called the songs of Milarepa. That's what his talks are. So these are Daniel's songs. Uh, and a song is not intended to be like in a classroom that you would come out knowing something you didn't know before, that you're learning something. It's just like you listen to the song and maybe something in it catches your attention. Maybe you see something or feel something that you didn't feel before. So that's what this is really about. It's singing. See? Now also, the way I learned to do this <coughs> is I always use my own life when I do songs because the koans don't change, and it gets very like uh, uh, like fixed in glass if you just go over them. But my life does. And also the point being that this should be about your life. It should be about you really being able to appreciate our, our very unique existence in this world. And I'm going to talk about worlds. That's really this strange and wonderful world that we don't understand and never will, and that we will never reduce to a formula. So I'm more interested in imbuing you with a sense of wonder and appreciation than telling you anything. If you want somebody to tell you anything, anyone will be willing to. You know, just go out there. Like I say, you, know, you, you can try this. Go out on the street, like go downtown, you know, stop somebody and say, what is the meaning of life? They'll know. They'll know, honestly. <laughs> they may not all agree, but they'll all know. <laughs> okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so I really don't want to do that. So last night I, I was up late with my older kid, and uh, because it was a very good night, and this is what this is about, I. I have a little time that I didn't have because I'm not administrating here. And, uh, so I'm going back to something I did when I was younger, which is I'm going to play competitive chess again. I'm going to play tournaments. And, uh, <clears throat> and let me tell you what I'm doing, but I'm going to tell you a story first. And this is a, about a famous uh, Middle Eastern teacher uh, who we pronounce his name either Mullah Nasruddin or Mullah Nasir Eden. And uh, he uh, is a really, he's, Mala means teacher, so he's a famous figure in Middle Eastern thought. <coughs> and at one time, the Mala was a teacher, uh, a judge, rather. 
and uh, he has to rule on people's uh, behaviors and things like that. And a mother comes in front of him with a kid who's been eating tons of sugar, and she says to the mother, what should I do? How can I stop him from eating all this sugar? It's very bad for him. So the mother says, court adjourned. We'll, we'll reconvene in two weeks. And she's just kind of shocked. Takes her kid, goes home. Comes back in two weeks. And uh, the mother says, OK, I've reached a decision. He can only have two spoons of sugar a day, and that's it. So the mother says, you had to dismiss court for two weeks? to come up with that brilliant thing? You know, like, he said, yes, I had to get down to two sugars myself first. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel that way too. See, like, if you're going to get up here and teach, I'd like to be down to two sugars myself. <laughs> Not be teaching people things I can't do. You know? It really is kind of bad to teach people things you can't do yourself, isn't it? I don't want to do that. So I try to continue to grow. So anyway, so I was going back to playing chess, which I've been doing since I was a young man, and it was a way of growth for me. And I decided, you know, I'm really going to go for it. I'll start playing tournaments I did before, and I'm going to get myself a real good coach. Now, you can get a coach these days, and I wanted this guy, Jeremy Silman, who is, uh, he's won the U.S. Open and the National Open, and he's the coach for the U.S. International Junior Team, which junior is very important in chess, because uh, that's where they <coughs> evolved. And I said, I'm never going to get him to coach me. How did how, but he does have a website. So I read his history a little, and Jeremy has kind of a little bit of a spiritual background. So I said, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So I wrote him and said, Jeremy, I would be so pleased. I actually wrote Mr. Stillman. I would be so pleased if, you, if it were possible to study with you. And if I'm, this is the guy that most, there's two teachers that are the very best. Uh, they, they have to be, like when you teach here, not just good players, but good teachers. And he's a good teacher. I'd be very happy. And I said, and by the way, uh, I, uh, I do a couple of things. I, uh, I develop people, uh, I teach them to you know, excellence, and I do it with businesses, and I'm a Zen teacher. And he wrote back and he said, I don't take on any students unless they interest me in some way uh, anymore. However, you just did it. I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> as a Zen teacher, I'm interested and I'll take you on. So I'm going to start. And, you know, I mean, this is a dream come true for me. So we were all excited and we stayed up late and we looked at some of my games. And I'm going to go back and forth here in order to try to we 